Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. I know I am so late, but today we are finally getting into the new Chanel Spring Summer Makeup Collection, which officially launched a few weeks ago on Chanel.com. It has not, however, rolled out to my local beauty boutiques. So unfortunately, I still do not have my hands on that blue eyeshadow palette. I waited, I held out for as long as possible, and I've been texting my sales associate every single day. We think it might arrive sometime this week, so I'm gonna review everything else that I have today, which is basically everything else. The palette was the only thing I could not get my hands on that I wanted. I also skipped the two nail polishes, which were really pretty, and the two Rouge Coco Balm lipsticks, but I have everything else. It's a very vibrant, very joyful, youthful spring-summer collection this year, which I absolutely love because that's not something you always see every year from Chanel, and these pieces are so different from everything else I have in my makeup collection. So I was really excited based on just the photos and the sneak peeks alone, and when I saw them in person, it got me even more excited. It's definitely giving South Beach summer vacation Miami mermaid vibes, so I'm very excited to finally play around with these. I'm gonna begin by unboxing everything I picked up, starting with this number 88 Coral Treasure eyeshadow palette. I absolutely love this color story. Between the two eyeshadow palettes, I actually think this one is a bit more wearable. I can see myself grabbing this a little bit more, I love that iridescent purple shimmer. The pink is beautiful. And then you have a lighter and deeper coral shade. This is stunning. And I noticed recently on a red carpet, Margot Robbie's makeup artist used this palette. So we definitely have some inspiration today. Next, we have the Rose Coquillage Powder Blush Duo. I really like that swirl pattern that's embossed on top of all of these powders. It's very pretty, kind of reminds me of the sun. This is a powder blush duo, half rose, half coral. I think it is so beautiful. If I'm being honest, I probably could have skipped this because I picked up all three of the Le Beige Healthy Winter Glow Blushes and I really love all of them. So I definitely didn't need this, but I thought it was really pretty and I just wanted to compare. The Balm Essential Strikes again. I told you that somebody had to stop me from purchasing any more of these, but this Mermaid Glow was calling my name. Anything with mermaid in the title just has to be mine. And I do think it's really pretty. My problem is not that these are bad products, it's just that I don't really use them. Completely my fault. But this mermaid has a very light, kind of golden sandy sheen to it. It's so pretty. It has a little bit more of an iridescent sparkle. This Lumiere de la Ocean Illuminating Powder. Now this is the only thing that I did swatch yesterday. I was playing around with these pieces and oh my goodness. I sincerely hope nobody rushed out to purchase this. I doubt they did because I think a lot of us have highlighter fatigue. But this highlighter has got to be one of the most interesting shade choices that I have ever seen. It's very iridescent and it translates to blue on the skin, like full on Elsa frozen frostbite mermaid goddess. It's a unique shade, that's for sure. In pictures, it looks so close to the pearly white oversized highlighter that launched with the Symbol de Chanel collection, or maybe even the white side of the double-sided highlighter with Holiday last year. This is very different. It's very iridescent and the shift is blue. I'm a big fan of the Rouge Allure Lac lipstick formula, so I did pick up shade 92 Seashell and shade 93 Sea Star. And finally, I purchased the Stilo Yo Waterproof in shade 82 Blue Abyss. I don't think we're really gonna play around with this today. I'm gonna wait until I have my blue eyeshadow palette. I scooted in nice and close, and for foundation today, I'm using my Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This has been my longtime favorite. I keep it in the top drawer, and because I'm trying to use all of my favorite makeup first, this has been my everyday foundation. My skin's been pretty good lately. I do have a little red dot right there. Hopefully it doesn't become anything more than that. I think I should be able to get rid of it by tonight. And it was most likely caused by stress. We've had sort of a crazy few weeks. The last time we got ready together, I was getting ready for my photo shoot, which went really well. And then I was off to New Orleans that week. We were there for a really quick trip during Mardi Gras. It was so much fun. I made incredible memories, met so many great people. I hope we get to do it again next year. I'm already counting down the days. 
and I just love spending time in New Orleans. It really hadn't changed at all since I had been there, which was nice to see. The week after we got back, I was so exhausted. I really was just not feeling myself. And then last weekend was really busy and hectic because we just had a ton of events and things going on. At some point, I hurt my neck and it's a mystery injury. I'm still not quite sure what happened. I woke up on a Saturday morning and here I thought I just slept on it funny, you know, when you have a crick in your neck and it's really sore and uncomfortable, but it goes away within a few hours. So I just went about my normal business. I went to Pilates, I did some yard work, my husband and I went on a long walk, but I just kept on waiting for it to go away, thinking that it would just go away on its own. Well, it's now been over a week and it still hurts so bad. I don't know what happened. It's clear to me now that I didn't simply sleep on it funny. I actually pulled or strained something in my neck because the pain has been excruciating. I've been trying to just work through it, but I honestly haven't been that successful. Even with painkillers, I still experience extreme discomfort on a regular basis. The pain never truly goes away completely. It just becomes a little bit more manageable. I can function and go about my day-to-day -day business a little better. The weight of my head just sitting on my shoulders feels excruciating if I don't take anything. That's how bad it is. I still don't have all of my mobility yet. Like This is as far as I can tilt my head. My husband keeps telling me to go to the doctor, but I just don't know what a doctor is gonna tell me. I've been doing heat, ice, massage, everything you could possibly think of. Of course, I've Googled it a hundred times. If anyone has experienced anything similar, if you have any recommendations, any products I should pick up, please let me know in the comments. I am desperate for anything. I've been applying Tiger Balm, CBD Balm. I really think what I truly need is just time and rest. I'm hoping, fingers crossed. I tell you what, I've never felt so old in my life. I'm so used to being able to bounce right back and spring back from things like this. And I swear, I didn't do anything strenuous, nothing out of the ordinary. It was probably just a bad night's sleep that took me out. It's a nice little reminder that health is truly wealth. And wherever you are in the world and whatever you are going through at this time, just know, that if your head doesn't feel like it's attached with a spike, you are blessed. I swear when this is over, I will never take a day without neck pain for granted ever again because now I know how bad it can be. Now that our base is down, we can finally get into one of these new products. I'm gonna try both of these blushes, one on each side, because I'm kind of curious, this rose shade over here looks sort of unique. It's an interesting shade, the coral, I already know I'm going to love. So let's start over on this side. And of course you can always just swirl them together, but because it is half and half, I feel like you could just use one or the other as well. So let's try that first. I'm gonna go into the coral. It's a really pretty pinky peach. I wouldn't have been mad if it was just this color by itself. Let's see. I love it. I thought I would, and I do. <laughs> it's really pretty. Such a happy, happy color. It does remind me of the Le Beige Healthy Winter Glow Collection blushes, which I really love. These colors remind me so much of Easter. I wouldn't say there's a huge, huge noticeable difference between the two sides. You can tell that they are different. I wanted to build them up so you can see this is the pink and this is the peach. It seems like the pink side leans a little bit cool and the peach side leans a little bit warm. So I think mixed together, it would be a really pretty combination. Or if you definitely wanted to use one over the other, you could do that as well. They made it really easy to do that. I'm happy with it. I think the formula is really nice. The colors are beautiful. Is it such a standout product that you have to add this to your collection? Absolutely not. If you have a lot of blushes, and you probably do because I feel like every brand under the sun has released at least five blush formulas in the past two years, you probably don't need this. 
I know I already set my face with powder. Usually I would do this before powder since it's a cream product, but I'm just going to quickly bronze using this Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. And I have the shade Light Bronze. It's very natural. My face is looking pretty pale at the moment because I haven't been using my Dior Sunless Tanner for the face. At least not for the last few weeks because I recently did my third and final treatment of microneedling with radio frequency and you can't use any harsh actives, no retinol, no tretinoin, and no sunless tanner for the face. The session went really well. My skin is completely healed immediately after I had a lot of red dots on my face. Because it was my third and final treatment, they went a little bit deeper with the needles still within the fat safe range so it doesn't melt or target any fat beneath the skin but it was definitely more aggressive so it took my skin a couple days to recover whereas i didn't really have any downtime previously moving on to eyes i went ahead and quickly filled in my eyebrows and now we are getting into this coral treasure eyeshadow palette it reminds me of a sunset or a sunrise it's gorgeous i love all of these shades I think what I'm gonna do, I don't really want to concentrate on the pink because I feel like that would be the obvious shadow. I'm gonna start up here at the top. I'm going into this lighter coral shade up here and I am going to buff this in the crease. I feel like I still haven't recovered from, was it 2021 or 2022 when all of the brands were coming out with pink eyeshadow palettes. And of course, at the time I bought them all and I have so, many pink eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I think I even just got sort of burnt out from creating pink eyeshadow looks. Not that they can't be beautiful, but I'm just trying to see what other combination we can come up with. That peach is so pretty. Oh my goodness, I love, love, love this. I have to see what that purple iridescent shimmer looks like, so we're definitely going to use that in some capacity. I just picked up a blank brush. Next, we're going into the deeper coral down here. This is really the deepest shade in the palette. I'm curious to see just how deep we can get this color. So this is going to be concentrated on the outer half of the lid and the outer crease. It's pretty, but it's going to give you a small step up from the lighter coral. It's really not too dark. But again, it's very wearable and it creates a really nice ombre effect. It's also not too orange. I think it looks really pretty. These are my colors over the summer. I love these warm peachy orange tones. They're so pretty with tan skin, tan glowy skin. This is a Refer 01 brush. I'm just gonna flip it to the other side that's still sort of blank. And I'm gonna go directly into the pink and I'm just working this inward on the lid. It's very light, which I kind of love. It's not too Barbie pink. It's looking very tropical. Do you remember when that was a trend, the sunset eyes? And I like that the colors are a bit softer, which is to be expected from Chanel, but I think it makes these jewel tones more wearable. With a pencil brush, I'm gonna pick up the deeper coral or light copper color, and I'm going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. And we have to try this really pretty shimmer. So I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to try to pop that on the inner lid. Ooh. It's very pretty. It definitely gives it a pop. I'm trying to pick it up with the brush. It really is better with fingers, I think. Or maybe I just need a different brush. Kind of bringing that to the inner tear duct area as well. I love it. It's not an everyday makeup look, but I think it's a really pretty, very fun, festive evening look or a summer date night. The eyeshadow isn't really all that shimmery either. There's a little sheen to it, but it doesn't look like sparkle. It's not super glittery. In the pan, you can tell that it has little blue reflex in it, but you can't really see it on the eye that much. It's so fine. I'm going back quickly to emphasize the pink in the middle so it doesn't get lost in the ombre, but I think that looks so pretty. It looks very cool. The problem is when you wear colors like this, you have to be careful of the outfit. That's why I did know I was playing with this palette, so I threw on the white dress and my starfish earrings so I would be on theme. 
But I would say if you're going to wear jewel tones on the eyes, you almost always have to be in neutrals. So all white, all black. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing a matchy matchy look unless that's your style and you love that. But I think with makeup like this that's more colorful, you wanna play down the outfit usually. As you can see, I finished the eyes with liquid eyeliner on the top lash line as well as mascara. And now it's time to try these two highlighters. We're going to use them both. Before I go into the blue highlighter, I'm gonna show you what this mermaid glow looks like. This is the Balm Essential. So pretty. And unfortunately, the sun is going down. I think I missed it or else I would have stepped outside just to show you what this looks like. It's still clear. It's still shimmer within the balm. So it's still going to go on like a really pretty glass skin. This is definitely the more natural of the two highlighters. And I don't think you'd really be able to notice the luminosity or the iridescence unless you were up close. See here, I can see it. It looks wet and glossy, and then I can see just a little bit of a kind of peachy pink reflect. It looks really pretty on top of the blush, actually. This, I think, is perfect. You have to be careful when you're applying. It did start to lift my foundation. It looks okay on the cheek, but I can see my foundation lifting on my finger. So that's one downside of using these is you just have to be really careful what's underneath but it does look really nice. It makes the cheek look plump and juicy and just healthy. On this cheek, we're gonna apply the Lumiere de la Ocean highlighter and I'm just gonna go in with this little brush. This came with the blush actually. I'm gonna try to start really light-handed. See, this is probably as light as it can go and it, this looks really nice actually. It hurts for me to even turn my neck. I'm sorry, I'm being so awkward. I want you to be able to see it. That actually looks pretty. But when you look in the mirror, like even right from right here, I can tell that there's blue shimmer on the cheek. That might be a deal breaker for some people. I don't hate it, but it, it's iridescent. It's giving blue. If you build it up, you can really see the iridescent reflect. So it looks kind of pink, purple, and blue. And it's very pretty, it's very unique. I think this might look really pretty on the eyes actually. I don't love this highlighter with this eye look. The colors I think conflict a little bit because this pool's kind of cooler. It would probably be a better highlighter to use with the blue eyeshadow palette. I think this side is a little bit more natural and it just goes with the eye look. Last but certainly not least, we have two lippies. And again, I'm not sure if this is going to be the best color combination with the makeup look today, but I just wanna show you what both of them look like. When I took this out of the box earlier in the video, I was surprised how dark this was. This is 92 seashell. And I was thinking this was gonna be a really pretty light corally nude. It looks really dark. And because it's a liquid lip, it's also going to oxidize. So I'm curious, I'm gonna to try to stick with one coat. It's a really pretty color. I love this nude. It is darker than what I had expected. Ooh, okay, this might actually be my favorite piece of the collection. And I almost skipped the lips altogether because I'm drowning in lipsticks, but this is so pretty, wow. This is a great everyday color. You have the feel of a traditional bullet lipstick with the longevity of a liquid. I quickly wiped that off and now we're gonna go in with Sea Star. I try not to layer too much product when it comes to either the Rouge Allure Lac or the inks because not only do they oxidize and they get a little bit darker, but it can start to feel a little bit heavy, like you have a thick coat on your lips as it dries down and as it wears throughout the day. So just be mindful. 
Less is actually more. Trying to get a precise line since it's a red. Ooh, I like it. Oh, and you know, it doesn't look as bad with the eyes as I thought. It's kind of pretty. I really like a warm red over the summer. That's why I went ahead and picked this one up as well. Which do we prefer? I think I kind of like this one better with this makeup look. I do really like the nude. I think the seashell I'll probably get the most use out of, but this is a really pretty color. It has a warm undertone, so it goes really nicely with the eyes, which are a bit warmer, with the cheek, which is nice and warm, but it's the highlighter that just sort of messes everything up. And it doesn't look god awful, but it's not the best it could be when I look at this side. This side is okay. On this side, everything looks pretty good. So don't judge the makeup based on this shimmery blue highlighter over here. Just look how pretty and plump this peachy cheek is. What was missing was bronzer, so I quickly added a little bronzer around my hairline. I blended it down my neck and chest as well. I think for these colors, it just looks a little bit better if you have a bit more color, a bit more bronzer. So let's talk about the collection. Overall, I think these pieces are really beautiful individually. I'm not sure this is the best makeup look. I think I'll probably need to play around with everything a little bit more. I cannot wait to get my hands on the blue eyeshadow palette. Fingers crossed nothing terrible happened with delivery and the boutiques do end up receiving it. I will say even this coral eyeshadow palette is really beautiful. I'm glad I was able to experiment and integrate all four shades into this eyeshadow look. I would most likely do something a little bit different, you know, little tweaks in the future. I might not use all four shades the next time, maybe just two, maybe one, maybe just pop a little bit of that shimmery color right there on the lid. I think that would be really beautiful, but it's gorgeous and it's something that is so different. So I'm really happy with the coral palette. This blush duo is really beautiful. I'll most likely just mix these two shades together. I did add a little bit more blush just because I felt like I needed it. It's very pretty. I probably could have skipped it even though it's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like it looks so similar to the Le Beige blushes that they just came out with not too long ago, but it's a nice piece. It's a nice addition to the collection. This highlighter, the Ocean Highlighter, is probably the most unexpected. I'm In a way, I'm glad that it's different from the oversized pearly white highlighter. That would have seemed like overkill but it's maybe a little bit too iridescent. I'm not sure. I need to keep playing around with this as well. I do think it looks really pretty and you can be somewhat subtle. For me, this is exclusively for a date night, an evening out, a special occasion, some sort of festive makeup occasion where it would call for blue shimmer or iridescent shimmer on the cheeks. Now this Mermaid Glow, this is really stunning. It's a bit more natural, even though it also has a little iridescent sheen to it. I cannot wait to use this. I'm just gonna pop it in the top drawer. I'm committing to using up one of my bomb essentials and it's gonna be the Mermaid. Both of the lippies are really beautiful. The nude, I think I could easily wear on a daily basis. This hot red, I think is really pretty, so much fun. I'm gonna try to get more use out of the red. I think I probably say that every single time I purchase a new red lipstick from Chanel. And we have so many more red lipsticks coming, but I do really like this undertone. I like that it's warm, it's kind of a fire engine red. So much fun, and this is definitely going to be really pretty over the summer for a date night or a special occasion. And that completes today's review. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm curious what you think of this collection. When I've mentioned it in the past, it seems like the reaction is somewhat polarizing. You either really love it or you really hate it. And honestly, I can understand both ways. If you're looking for a contact at a Chanel boutique, feel free to send me a direct message on Instagram and I will forward you my essay's information. I don't wanna just blast her information publicly by replying to a comment. So please send me a direct message on Instagram and I will happily forward you her information. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.